inviting me to do this formal opening of the Manapuri end of this Lake to Lake trail. It's the uh, section from uh, Supply Bay to Manapuri, and uh, we have the commemoration rock up there, which um, was here put here to mark the celebration of the saving of Manapuri and Tiana. Probably most of you will know that uh, the original plan, the original contract, 1960 was to raise the level of Manapuri to that of Tiano, and uh, Tiano could be modified only to the extent that the township would not be threatened. When the engineers looked closely at it, it was clear that uh, a 27 metre rise, and it's marked on the rock up there where the level might have come, so we'd be underwater here, uh, wasn't feasible, they'd lose control of the water to the east, so it settled between 8 and 11 metres to raise the level. And uh, at Tianel, they found later on that uh, the level they'd set for Tiana was a metre into the township. As uh, Charles Turner, the head of ministry work, said at the time, we only had an aneroid barometer to set the level of Tiano and uh, we got it a metre high. But don't worry, we'll build a low masonry wall around the township of Tiano. This is what they told the Commission of Inquiry. In the unlikely event of water seeping through, can you imagine water seeping through on the big fan of Tiana? We'll use the local fire pump and pump it back into the lake. The Commission was not impressed by that proposal and told Ministry of Work Electricity Department to lower the level to what it should have been. So uh, I got invited through the Electricity Department and the University of Otago Botany Department to look at the shoreline of Manapuri, describe what was there prior to it being flooded and lost for all time. And due to Hugh Templeton, some of you might remember Hugh Templeton, who was the National Party member for Awarua, organised a similar study that we did on Tianau. So we had both lakes assessed, measured, monitored and described. And uh, it was a major campaign, some of you all remember it, I'm sure. I see some of you here old campaigners, so that's great. And uh, not only did, the, did it unite the people of Manapuri and Tiano, but 250,000 citizens of New Zealand, 10% of the population at the time, signed a petition against the raising of Manapuri. So it became a hot political issue, as some of you will remember, in the late 60s. and. Uh, became a political issue in the 72 election when it was a major switch to Labour. <coughs> Norman Kirk, who was uh, the leader of the Labour Party at the time, made a commitment ahead of the election that the lakes would not be raised, regardless of the commitment. It was a landslide victory to Labour. Many traditional national seats went to Labour, including down here in Southland and Central Otago. Kirk was on his word first thing he announced was the lakes would not be raised. The second thing he announced, I think, was more courageous, and that was he set up a group of guardians from among the locals to advise the government on managing the lakes to ensure that in their use for hydro generation, which was already in, in tow, the lake shores would not be damaged. So they were local campaigners. One of Steve's forebears, John Moore, Dr. Tiano was one of the guardians. Wilson Campbell, some of you remember from, from Tiano, Motelia, was a guardian. Wilson and uh, Les Hutchins from Manapuri here, chair, CEO of Fjord and Travel. Uh, Jim McFarlane, a civil engineer from Invercargill. Ron McLean, who led the campaign, a farmer from Kennington, and myself. And uh, I was chair for the first 26 years. We devised the guidelines to manage the lakes on the basis of our earlier studies. And those guidelines were gazetted so that they're now a requirement of the power company. It was the electricity department, then it was the Electricity Corporation. Now it's Meridian Energy. They're bound by those gazetted guidelines to manage the lakes to ensure that the shorelines will be protected in their natural state. So as Steve said, it was an outcome of integrating conservation with that hydro development, which was a major success and Meridian referred to it as a world first. Some of you will have seen the signs, one at Pearl Harbor, one in front of the visitor center in Tiano, and one up at the boat harbor. A world first, managing 
two major lakes in a national park, New Zealand's premier national park, World Heritage Area, to ensure that the conservation values were integrated with the hydroelectric values. So it's, it's a world first by Meridian standard and I would agree with that. So it's great to see Meridian supporting this exercise. It's great to see so many people here with it. I congratulate the Trust for completing the sixth, sixth section. The fifth is still to go and uh, they've done it within their budget, within their time schedule to a grade two standard of trail and they've kept it off the highway. I think that's great. You'll notice that around the mountain highway from Lumsden to Mossburn <laughs> sits along the highway. To keep it off the highway is a rate feature. So it's my great pleasure to welcome you all here. Enjoy the trail. I decline Steve's invitation to bike it myself. I'm a bit haven't had ridden a bike for some time and I even declined an electric bike ride. So have fun. Everybody Thank using the trail. It's a trail, it's not a cycleway, it's for walking, it's for exercising in any way you see fit. See you, see you John. <laughs> section of the Lake to Lake Cyclic Trail officially open. <laughs>